Hey guys, my name is Jennifer and I am Genevieve Designs. Today we are going to start working on the small Wanderlust and this is the little traveler's notebook that we're going to be making. And I believe this one's going to be a fast one too. This is a quick and easy gift idea too. So maybe it's a good, good timing because it's almost Christmas time. <laughs> so it might be really good timing. So as usual, a link to my printables will be down below in the description box. There will also be a link to this playlist because this one is using the Prima Flirty Fleur paper collection. So there will be an actual playlist specifically for this one. So the first video on that playlist will be the introduction video to the Wanderlust templates themselves. And then the second one will be the start of this album. So. If you want to make this from start to finish, I suggest you go down there and click that um, playlist. And then if you want to, you can skip the introduction video and start with the making of the Traveler's Notebook. Forgot what I was going to say there. I just lost my train of thought. <laughs> okay, so this is one of the projects that we did at uh, MadeCon in September. It's a convention where I taught classes there, and this is one of the classes that I taught. So I do have one of those kits that the students got in that class, but I'm also gonna show you everything you need to do. So if you don't have the kit, but you do have the Flirty Fleur, um, cause I, I told you guys a long, long time ago exactly the products that I was gonna be using for each class. So if you did go purchase those things, you will be able to do exactly what I'm doing if you so choose. Um, because I'm going to tell you everything. Even if you don't have a kit, you can still make this. Even if you don't have this paper collection, you can still make this. You can just pick whatever collection you like the most and you can make yourself one of these. And super, super quick, super easy. So you might, you know, you might end up making like two or three. There, it's not really, it's really not going to take you very long at all. Okay, so for this little small Traveler's Notebook, Wanderlust Traveler's Notebook, we are going to start with the covers. We're going to make the covers, um, and they are super easy, and you need just a few little pieces. So, I'm going to set that aside for now. So, if you have the kit, you already have all these supplies, but if you don't have the kit, then what you're going to need is page number one, and this is the covers, um, the mini album covers or the, or the Traveler's Notebook covers. And you'll need the traceable template part. So I'm going to go ahead and take these out since I've already got them cut out. Instead of using the one that's provided in the class kit, um, I'm just going to use the ones that I already have cut out. And that's the only template you're going to need for the covers currently. This is one of the 12 by 12 patterned papers from the collection, the Flirty Fleur. So you're going to need this piece, which is like a black and white stripe. And then on uh, another piece, this is another piece of the collection. What I did was I cut it down to eight and a half by 11. So this is one side and these are like, um, are they two by two squares or three by three? Or what are these? Well, these are not two by twos. It says two and three eighths inch by two and three eight a little weird okay well anyway there's a whole bunch of little cut of parts on one side and on the other side is a map but what i did on the other side was let me show you i took my shades of color that's what it looks like i took it and i printed page um or color number 18 color number 18 from the shades of color. I took that and I printed it on the back side of this paper because there is a mat back here and it's mostly white. So I wanted to add uh, another color to this collection because it's mostly black white and this minty green color, tealish color. And I thought, I just thought it needed just one more color and you know, I had to choose purple. So, <laughs> so there's that. <laughs> and then you will need a piece of Tyvek this one um, is cut, Tyvac is, is uh, not called Tyvac, Tyvac, T-Y-V-E-K. It's just a uh, almost indestructible material that you can mail things in and whatnot. Um, but it's big enough for the spine and two covers. It's actually a little bit bigger than you actually need. So what I'm gonna do, I think, um, 
Oh, and then you're also going to need, this piece was provided in the kit, but it looks like it may have printed a little funky too. Um, but this is just a, I printed a whole sheet of eight and a half by 11 cardstock. This is a 110 pound cardstock. And then I printed the um, purple, number 18 purple from the shades of color onto it. And then I cut this down. This is a little bit bigger. Um, well, I guess. I cut this down to be almost the size of one of the cover templates. It's just a little bit shorter. So this piece is three and a half by the length of the cover templates. So I think the cover templates is just a, yeah, just a little bit bigger. So then you'll need a piece that's cut down to three and a half by the height of the cover templates. And then this is going to be placed on the spine. So that all we need for right this second okay I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get my paper trimmer out and I'm gonna trim two of these white borders off from this paper oops I didn't trim that out very straight attach this piece of Tyvek to the back side of here like this is what I think I'm gonna do I really cannot remember how I did this in class it hasn't been that long I know it's December and the class was September hmm okay I'm just gonna go for it because I'm not really sure <laughs> I don't remember all right so I'm gonna take some double-sided adhesive this is just quarter of an inch because I'm just going to go around the whole border of the tie back to stick it down but I'm also going to fill the whole inside with glue oh, I feel like I'm far away once again so this is going to be a flexible cover which I love and when we were making it in class, they didn't believe me. They really didn't believe me. But then they started messing with it and playing with it and realized that, yeah, it is most definitely a flexible cover. So, pretty excited. I like, I like flexible covers like that. They just feel nice in your hand, you know? Okay. This is um, scrapbook.com tape, and these are Tim Holtz mini snips. Um, I have links down below to all the products that I use. It's an Amazon list mostly, but there's also a couple links to other places that I like to shop, like Etsy. Okay, so before I add glue to the inside, I'm going to go ahead and remove the back of this tape that I just put down along the corners, or along the corner, <laughs> along the edges. I'm just going to remove the backing. And then I'm going to use some Fabri-Tac Beacon. And I'm going to fill the whole inside of this. And just let my glue come down. Okay, I'm going to fill the whole inside. I mean, not solid. But I like to go in, um, go around the edges a little bit. And then I like to kind of go in a circle. Like this. And it just kind of disperses the Fabri-Tac out just a little bit better. So you're not using as much glue. You can do this with whatever glue you like to, to use the best. Like you could use art glitter glue or tacky glue or whatever you want to use. Use whatever you like the best. You just want to make sure that you get good coverage. Doesn't have to be solid, just good. And then I'm going to flip this over whoa, and I'm going to touch it down to this bottom corner as best I can.
Oh, I got it on there slightly crooked. Oh well. I'm just gonna go for it. And this is a Teflon bone folder. I love using this thing. It's substantial. All right, so I think we've got that pretty good on there. So now I think I am going to, you know what actually, you know what actually I'm gonna do? I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna cut this out just around this tie back, even though it's larger than what I need. I'm going to just go ahead and trim this out because what I'd like to do is get both of the front and back or front and inside or outside and inside paper onto this tie back and then trace it out and cut it all together. I think that'll make a smoother, a much smoother uh, album cover. Okay, I'm going to repeat that on this side. I'm going to Add tape all the way around and put glue on the inside. Okay, and then I'm going to flip this over, make sure that I know which corner has been trimmed down. There isn't a top or a bottom on well, there's not a top or bottom on the front side of the cover, so it doesn't matter. So now I'm just gonna apply this down here. I'm gonna lay it down. I'm gonna try to. I'm not shaking too bad here. And it down and then burnish. And then I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just going to trim this out. Now that I have that on there, I am going to not this, take my covers and I'm going to lay, I'm pretty sure that there's enough room for me to pull just away from the edge just a little bit, just in case something's not straight. Yep. So I'm going to take my cover templates from page one of the small. Wonderlust. I'm going to lay that down. I'm going to grab a pencil and trace around all four sides. Then I'm going to take the spine piece. I'm going to butt that right up next to it, just like that and trace around it. Now you could have, when you did your workbook um, for this template, you could have left these three pieces together and, and that would have been fine too. You just trace around and then score and then you would fold each piece back to make the marks. Um, but I didn't do that. I had trimmed mine apart. And if you want to know how I made my workbook, I will have a link in the description box below or the show more section below of a playlist where I show you all the different workbooks that I've made. All right, so now I'm going to, well, let me get my workbook out there and I'll show you. Um, now I'm gonna put these back where they belong. Whoops, right after I throw some pieces down on the floor. Put that back and put this back. So it's just good to have a place to put put your templates, your traceable templates. You can print this directly onto pattern paper if you'd like, or you can use it as a traceable template. Um, you also don't have to laminate. You can just use, you know, a binder, page protectors, all of that. You can, you can do a really simple version, or you can go all crazy like I do. <laughs> I don't go all crazy, but. All right, so now I'm just simply going to trim this out I'm going to try to see those marks because there's a huge glare 
because I have a lot of lights on in here. This is a Fiskars Heavy Duty Precision Paper Trimmer. So I'm going to trim this out as best I can here. All three pieces at one time. Perfect. Come down here. Trim that out. This just really makes for a very clean cover. Very neat and precise. Okay. Okay, so the next thing I want to do is this piece here that was provided in the kit, but it's just page 18, um, and I trimmed down a piece that's slightly smaller than the actual cover itself, a quarter of an inch smaller, so you can just use your uh, cover template if you would like to make this piece. And what I'm going to do, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to find the center of this piece here. What did I say it was? Three and a quarter? I'm going to just mark it lightly with my pencil. I'm going to come down here and mark the bottom lightly with my pencil. I like to mark the edge there. Then I'm going to find the center here. as best I can anyway it's just really for reference it doesn't have to be exact just so you know all right but before we do anything else so the two long sides I am just going to take and rough up those edges with my fingernail, just like that. And I'm going to rough this one up with uh, my fingernail. Okay, so first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take some wet glue, um, not the fabric tag. I'm going to take our glitter glue. I got me a little small bottle. Um, when we were at Metacon, we do a thing called Make It Go Round, and I had purchased um, a lot of these. So, <laughs> my other bottle, my big bottle, it just looks so gross. Can you see? It just looks so... Ah, it's all gross looking. Anyway. <laughs> so, I'm going to actually take this. Oh, you know what? Before I do that. Before I do that. Well, I guess I could go ahead and do that. I'm doing that. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to put the white glue. I'm going to make sure I get a very good amount in the spine area. So in between where I marked for the spine area, I want to make sure I really get a good amount because we're going to be poking holes through there. So I didn't want to put tape there. Um, and I'm going to go on the other side of that line just a little bit. Because as you know, tape never dries, so I'm going to go along the top and bottom of this piece here, and then I'm going to come in about a quarter of an inch from the edge, just a little bit. Okay, so now I need to try to find that mark again. So I'm going to line it up with the bottom or the top, whichever one you want to start with. And it should be pretty, sp oh well, okay, so my, my husband cut these pieces for us. He was so awesome. He did a lot of the repetitiveness for me. Well, not a lot. We all kind of did our, um, see it's a little bit taller 
than the actual <laughs> album cover, but that's okay. We can trim that off super easy. So let's see. I'm gonna twist it just slightly. Try to get it to match that mark there. There we go. Okay, so I am gonna go ahead and take a minute and I'm gonna press this down. So I'm gonna have to trim that off. So if you do have a kit, um, you know that your spine piece there is is um, taller than your covers. So I'm going to go ahead and burnish that really quick. I'm trying not to get too much oozing out. I don't know how my projects end up scooting away from me like that, but they sure the heck do. Okay, so I might have to do a little trimming on that end too, but that's okay. So, I think I'm going to take, I'm going to get my craft mat out and I'm going to use my craft knife to cut that just because there's so much glue. <clears throat> so this is a score pal craft mat. I love it. It's not too big. It's nice and thick. It's my favorite. And then this is a Scotch utility knife, um, or craft knife. Um, oh, I should probably cut. I've got just a little bit on this side. Okay, so now I'm gonna go back and rough my little edges up there. Just like that. So now we have something that looks like this. So I, I am going to, at this point, I'm gonna go ahead and ink all my edges. So this is Distress Oxide, once again, in Walnut Stain. So I'm just gonna take this and I'm gonna go around all of the outer edges here, front and back. First of all, don't you just love this color combination, black, white, and purple? So pretty. I like it. Okay, so here's where we're getting to. This is where we're kind of at right now, right? So it's going to end up looking like this. So it's looking pretty cool. Pretty cool. <laughs> um, I'm thinking we're going to let this dry for a minute, I think. while we cut out some other pieces for the cover. I think we'll do that. Okay, so the things that we need for the covers that was provided in the kit are is this page right here, and but I'll talk about that in just a second. Um, and page number eight in the small, can you see? Page number eight in the small, I printed that off onto this piece of pattern paper. This is the back side of the black and white stripe. <clears throat> so what I did was I cut my paper down to eight and a half by 11. Oh, oh, I see, I see. I had all of these kits printed by a professional printer and um, they had some slight issues, it appears. They had more issues than I thought when it come to printing as many as I needed. So they had to print a lot at one time. So I, <laughs> I cut down all the pattern paper to eight and a half by 11. I took it to them. I took them the files. I said, this is what needs to go on. What I gave them, I gave them, I showed them like, um, I had a visual for them of this page and everything <laughs> so that they knew they wouldn't mess it up. And it looks to me like this one has shifted down just a little bit. So the tabs down here are missing, which really stinks. But that's okay. We're just gonna have to go. I mean, these all things happened that we, that we didn't notice right away and we couldn't fix because once you print it onto 70 pieces of this piece of paper you know you you can't go back 
you know, I can't produce 70 more and say, okay, fix. You know, it just doesn't work that way. So, anyway, that kind of stinks. So, you're going to need to print page 8 onto this piece of patterned paper from the Flirty Fleur. And then this piece here, this was included in the kit. However, I was going to tell you what all, this page is not anywhere in any of the templates. So, this is like a mismatch, mis, mic, 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 mic. <laughs> it's just a bunch of different little elements, okay? <clears throat> okay, so if you bought, no matter what set of templates you bought, um, if it has the small in it, then you also have the medium, and that's where some of these pieces came from. So first I want to tell you, these tags, all of these tags here, they are on page 14 of the small. They are these tags right here. There's these two, and then there are these. So if you just wanted to, um, they, we're going to be using these. Um, just as they are, you know, with the with the vintage background on them. So if you wanted to print off the whole sheet, this whole sheet, you'll have what you need for the cover on, uh, of the vintage background. And then these two labels here are on page 10. So here's the label right here. And we are going to be using that um, as a traceable template, but that's not going to be used on the cover. So we don't even have to do anything with that right now but I just wanted you to know that these labels right here are on page 10 and it will be a traceable template so you can just go in your workbook and get your traceable template um, and then these two tags down here are actually in the medium there's the large and it's on I wrote it down page oh, that's still a large <laughs> Oh, here we go. Here's the medium. So the medium on page 13, right here. So there's three of them here, but we're going to be using these as a traceable template. So I'm just going to go ahead and grab that because we do need this for the cover. So that's what all of this is um, in your templates. Okay. I had to, you know, in order to cut the cost down a little bit, I had to combine some elements into one so each student would get this page instead of each student getting three different pages uh, printed off like you would from a template. Okay, so that means I'm not going to cut these two pieces off, um, but I am going to cut, well, I'm going to cut one of these and two of these out. And then I grabbed, this is actually one of the large cutoff pieces, and let me show you really quickly so you don't, you don't get confused. So, in the kit, I already printed off the, um, what are they called? The Traveler's Notebook insert covers. So, on the back side of this print is one of the covers. So, this is the large piece. So, when I cut this down to 8.5 by 11, this is one of the pieces that's left over. So, we're going to be tracing onto um, this piece. So, it's really a pretty pattern, don't you think? It's got that minty green and the black and the white. It's just, and some gray. It's just really, really, really pretty. Okay. All right. So that's why I have a large cutoff piece. So go ahead and get this piece out, cut it down, cut the top part off um, at the uh, eight and a half part, eight and a half side. <laughs> so you want to cut eight and a half and then turn it around and cut the one inch off the bottom. But this is the piece we're going to be using. So let me see. I need to cut out two of these, one of these, and then on this page, oh wait, I just totally told you a fib. We don't need this page. Did I tell a fib? I think I might have. Wait a second. Oh, I did tell a fib. We don't need this page right now. <laughs> Scratch all that. You don't need page eight. Rewind. You don't need this page. What you do need is we're going to be using one of these tags as a traceable template. <laughs> and then you'll need, I'll tell you what you will need. You will need this large cutoff piece. And that is from, let me see if I can figure out which one that's from. Oh, duh. That one is from... <laughs> I am losing my mind, you guys. 
when I cut this piece down to eight and a half by 11. That's, this is the large cutoff piece for that. Okay, so you're gonna need these two large cutoff pieces and this. You're not gonna need this for right now, but you will eventually, but you don't need it right now. Goodness. Okay, so I'm still just gonna cut out two of these and one of these, and then I'm gonna be using that as a traceable template. All right, so I'm gonna start here. I'm just gonna roughly cut this off of the page real quick. And then I'm gonna take two of these off. Like that, put that aside. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and cut these out. I'm gonna trim these out and then I will be back. Okay, so before I punch that hole out, I'm gonna punch out of one here, well, both of these actually. Also included in the kits were the hole reinforcements, and I used to make these purple ones, I used Distress Ink in Dusty Concord. The Oxide does not, it's, it's I, I don't think I have the Dusty Concord in the Oxide. I don't. I, don't remember but this one's just the regular distress ink so that made the purple ones and then the brown was made I'm almost 100% certain the brown was made with the walnut stain this one is the oxide so those are the two colors that I use to make these whole reinforcements and then the whole reinforcements that I used are these right there so again I'll have all these things linked in my Amazon list um, so you can check them out if you'd like so one of these whole small ones is going to have a purple and one is going to have a brown you don't have to put a brown one on there if you don't want to but I'm going to I feel like it gives it a little bit of extra dimension um, and then I'm going to take a hole punch and punch out the hole on that one. And then there's the long. And then on this one, let me check my prototype here. I'm going to put a brown one on this one as well. Whoops that hole okay so the first thing I want to do is I'm going to trace out one of these smaller tags I'm going to trace out of this paper right here so I'm just going to lay it up here doesn't even really matter really and I'm going to trace around the edges whoops Trace around the edges of this and the circle. And then um, th for this piece, we are going to trace out. Oh, that's cute. We're going to trace out a piece right here. So none of these things are removable, they're just really for decoration. So it doesn't really matter what's on the back side. If you wanted to trace this out on the back side so you can see it a little bit better because it is a, a more white, then go right ahead. So then we're gonna trace that out all the way around. And we're gonna trim these out. Because it is harder to see pencil on this black. Fancier tag type thing. And I'm going to round these bottom corners. And then I'm going to trim this one out. Can't trim and talk at the same time, apparently. So for this one, I think we're going to use a brown one as well. Or, yeah. 
should I use a purple? Let's use a brown. And punch a hole there. Did I lose my thing? I broke it. Yep, that's right. I have another one. It's just in the other room that was given to me at Metacon, actually, and it's purple. It's just in the other room. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and ink up all of these pieces with the brown, um, the brown, <laughs> the walnut stain distress oxide. I'm going to ink them all up just on the one side because that's all you're going to see. And then I'll be back. All right, so they're all inked up. And now I think I'm just going to do the same thing with my fingernail. I'm just going to rough some of these edges up here. I'm going to rough up all of them, I think. Well, not that side. I'm not going to rough that side up just because it's going to be cut off a little bit anyway. Alrighty, so then I'm going to rough this up. Ah! I'm going to rip that one. you don't have your fingernail you could use your scissors or what else could you use yeah, a distressing tool that's always you can always use one of those I don't think you should do this with your natural fingernail unless you have really strong fingernails but okay all right so I'm going to use two different types of string ish one is a natural uh, baker's twine um, I'll have that linked below I don't remember where I got this one but the one I have linked below looks more like um, oh, did I already put it up oh no here it is looks more like uh, you would find a baker's twine on a big old roll at least I think if I remember correctly and then this is a hug snug seam binding that I crinkled and the color is lavender so it's nine three four nine lavender so um uh crinkled it and then put it on this little type for everybody so i'm going to start with some of this unnatural and i'm not going to cut it off i'm going to the one that has the purple hole reinforcement i'm going to see I think I'm going to use this here, so I am going to have to cut it. Yeah, I don't know why I didn't think I wasn't. I was thinking it wasn't going to be long enough, and I'm trying to be a little bit more frugal. So there's one, and then I think I'm going to do natural on this long one, and then the other two I'm going to do purple. The other two tags, that is. I'm going to do the seam binding on the other two. Let me go ahead and put that back. Oh, God, now that's, I know that's not going to be <laughs> big enough. <laughs> oh, maybe. Got to be careful. So the last album we did was the Santa Baby album. And, um... I ran out of seam binding for that. I didn't mean to. I didn't put enough in the kit. But I, of course, have some at home, so I used it when I had it at home. Okay. I don't know what's going on here, but it looks kind of funky. Yep. Looks a little weird, so I'm just going to cut that off. All right, there's one, and then the other. This one is actually going to be on the back cover. So, just stick that in there. Somebody's told me, I mean, you guys have probably, I don't know, somebody, lots of you have told me lots of times what this knot is called. But, once again, I cannot remember. I should write it down somewhere because I use it all the time. I'm just going to cut that little bit of bin. That's the only thing uh, that stinks about putting stuff like that onto, like, this is just a, 
um, what is this called? A shipping tag. It, it does end up creasing the seam binding. So that does kind of stink, but, but it's all right. Okay, and so for this one though, we're gonna use a sticker. So this is from the Flirty Fleur sticker. This is a sticker sheet, item number 597634. And I really didn't end up using a lot of stickers in this one, I don't believe. I might be mistaken, which, cause I didn't, I did my prototype for the class, right? I did, you know, the main stuff, but then um, I didn't actually finish the whole thing. So, uh, yeah. So maybe we'll use more than I initially thought we would use, but I'm gonna use this little sticker right here on this, on, it's actually on the front sheet, and it says, happy. So I'm gonna go ahead and peel that off there. And it's, you can hardly even tell that it says happy. I am gonna try to run a little bit, of, even though you're really not gonna be able to see it that well. Just a little bit of ink on there. And I'm gonna put this on the top tab of this little, you know what, I might even cut the little tails off. I don't know, we'll see. No, I'm just gonna leave it. Just gonna put that right there, just like that. Right, just a simple little detail, no biggie. All right. So now we got those ready to go. Before we go any further on that, I think, I think we're going to take a moment and we're gonna add our holes. That's what I'm thinking. If you got a kit from Manicon, you did get one of these little type stencil type things, um, which are pretty straightforward. You just cut, the, trim this out, lay this on the cover, and you can poke holes through that stencil thingy. But we are not going to be using that in the video because it does. It's not part of the. Um, it's not part of the. What am I trying to say? Printable templates. Keep all of the little, like if you, if you got a kit, keep all the little things because we do end up using most of the stuff, even the storage stuff, like this glassing bag, we do end up using these types of things in the album. So don't throw that stuff away. Um, this is the elastic. And I'm pretty sure it's a big enough piece. This is black elastic cording. Comes on a big old roll like this. Um, that I think, and if I'm not mistaken, this is Darice. Not 100% sure, but I ha will have it linked in my Amazon list if you want to check it out. Um, and I'm using black, so I'm gonna I got that out. And then let me get my templates back out because I kind of forgot about this part. I did, I did. And I'm gonna get these two back out because I'm gonna mark. I just want to mark where the um, spine is. So I'm gonna mark, I'm not even gonna mark it all the way down, just mark, mark. Stick this over here next to it. Mark, mark. Just that easy. Now it's gonna be hard for you guys to see because it's just little pencil marks. Oh my gosh, I can't even see. <laughs> ah! I did mark it, didn't I? Yes. Mark, mark. Mm hmm. Okay, so it's going to be hard for you to see, but I did mark. There's two marks here, and then there's two marks up here. So now, what I'm going to do, if you didn't want to put those marks on there, you could just literally measure your center like this, you know, from side to side. You can literally just measure your center. You do not have to add those two marks if you didn't want to. Quarter of an inch up from the bottom, mark the center, and then one, two, three, three eighths of an inch from center, one, two, three, three eighths of an inch from center on the other side. So we're gonna mark those holes there. And then we're gonna flip this around, do the same thing. Quarter of an inch in from the top, find the center. Oh, I went the wrong direction. Oh. 
mark the center one two three from the center one two three from the other side and those holes are now marked so now I'm going to find the center between here so I'm going to go into that center mark that we initially marked I'm going to line my ruler up on those marks the mark center here the mark center there and then I'm going to find the center of the of the actual book itself I think that might have it right there and I'm gonna mark that just right there so I'm gonna mark this I think I'm gonna mark this better for you guys so you can see I'm gonna mark it with a sharpie there's the center right there then here's the center down here and one two three to the left one two three well, one two three to the right and then uh, here I'm gonna mark the center one two three to the left one two three to the right all right I'm gonna try to get it to focus so you can see so you see there's three marks there there's a center mark there and then there's three marks there you see Okay, so I'm going to use, this is a We Are Memory Keepers a Cropodile. Um, does it say Cropodile on it? The packaging does. This just says We Are Memory Keepers on the handles. And I'm going to use the one-eighth of an inch side. So there is a quarter of an inch side and a one-eighth of an inch side. And I'm going to punch the holes that I made, or I'm sorry, I'm going to punch the markings that I made out if you don't have one of these then you can just use a something like this and just kind of make a big enough hole for it but I think you should get one of these if you don't have one because they're awesome especially if you're gonna make a bunch all right and I'll show you because we'll have to do the center hole we'll have to do that with something like this so one, two, three. This is the third on the on the bottom or the top. And then I'm gonna flip it around and do these three. I can't get that piece out there. We go. And I am notorious for getting these holes kind of whoop, whoop, whoop. You know, they're almost never straight. Yeah, this one, I can tell this, the one on the left here. It's going a little downhill. I'm going to try to see if I can get it to go up just a little bit and not be that noticeable. Yeah, that's not too bad. Not too bad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, know, you can probably see it better if I flip it this way. You see the hose better. I should have marked it on that side so you guys could see a little bit better. Okay, so then we got one more hole to do, and that's in the center. So if you have anything that you can sit underneath your project, something thick, so if you take a, something and poke a hole, like this is one of the stylus that I use. This has got a sharpie, a sharpie, a sharp point on the end I'm gonna use it because it's got like a thicker like it gets thick down here I'm hoping my camera will focus just for a second there we go you see how it gets thick down towards the base there that's a really good thickness uh, to punch through there so I'm gonna punch it through that way and then I'm gonna stick it back through this way just like that right all right so now we got the hole for that. So she, you could have done that for all the holes. You didn't have to use your uh, We Are Memory Keepers. Crop it out. All right, so but before we start putting that in, I am gonna start manipulating my cover. And basically what we're gonna do is we're just gonna start kind of like getting it to bend. So, 
on the purple side, that's going to be the inside. So you want it to kind of start bending that way. You know what I mean? So I'm just going to start just kind of working with it because we're not scoring anything and we don't want to like force it in half because that's not what we want. So we're just going to start. We're just going to work at it. And so if you're like me, you didn't put enough glue in between your Tyvek and your paper and it's going to wrinkle just a little bit, but that's okay. Or you could have done this part when it was a little bit wet, but you know what I mean? So it's like a little bit more pliable, whatever, whichever way you want to do it. This doesn't really, yes it does. It has, this one does have, the inside has an up and a down. Okay, so. And then the edges that, you know, sometimes that'll happen, but I don't mind that at all. So we don't want a sharp bend. We just want a soft round spine. Right? See, mine is, mine is doing that because I didn't get enough glue on it. But when you're filming, you're in a hurry and you tend to make more mistakes than you would if you were at home. So be sure to lay on the glue and then also maybe work it a little bit when it's wet. Might be a good idea. Okay. Anyway, all right, so now we got, we got a little bit going there. Our cover's starting to take shape, and if anything weird, just, you don't, just take your ink to it. Anything weird happens. Okay. All right. So you can see where it wrinkled. Can you see that? We're kind of wrinkled up a little bit. So probably if I would have done it when it was wet, it would have been not wet, wet, but like damp. It would have worked a little bit better for me, but again, that's okay. So, you know, maybe make a prototype first <laughs> or not, whatever. <laughs> All right. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to string this up. So this is the way you would string up a traveler's notebook to where you have three bands or four. This one will actually give you four. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start in the middle on the inside, or actually you can start in the middle on the outside and just bring in a tail and that's really just enough to tie. And then you want to go from the outside, go over to one side or the other, either one, and you want to bring that in so that you have something that looks like that on the outside and this on the inside. Then you want to take that and come all the way down to the bottom, right hand hole there, just like that. Okay, so then on the outside, we're at the bottom. We're going to go into the middle and come back to the inside of the covers. So you have something that looks like this on that side and this on that side, right? And then you wanna go all the way up to the top in the middle and you wanna go out, well, you wanna go back out that center hole, but I always need help because um, I don't wanna take the time to put, you know, to burn the ends or to put tape on it. I just, you know, I'm just weird like that. So I just kinda of take something pointy and shove it through just far enough to where I can get it out because it is sharing the hole with uh, the same, you know, string or cording, I guess. Okay, so then I'm on the outside and then I'm going to go to the next hole over like that to come back in, right? Go all the way down to the bottom hole there and come back out. So now we got three strings on the inside. 
and then we're going to come over back to the middle on this side same thing we're going to shove it through that center hole because it's sharing a hole with the other piece there right and we're going to come back in okay so now you want to give it a little tug you don't want it to be super tight but what you want to do now is you want to go and tie it I'm not going to tie mine in the center because there's going to be another knot there so I'm going to bring it down to the bottom a little bit more tie it down here just like that right and you see I've got this huge long tail well we're going to use that as the closure so no worries so then I'm going to snip that a little bit so then the next thing we want to do so now we got all our strings we got one two three four and the fourth one is the one that we just tied so to make the closure I think what I'm going to do is try to sometimes I can do it sometimes I can't I'm going to try to shove this in the hole from the inside here There we go. So I ended up pulling out like a loop from the center there. So let's see. We're going to experiment here. So maybe I might leave just a little bit more. So for this size book, I think I'm going to leave approximately four inches. That might be too much. Four ish inches so I'm gonna pull it back through a little bit and then I'm gonna tie a knot with both of those ends right so I'm not gonna cut too tight that way if I need to I can loosen it back up so then I'm gonna test it out so yeah that worked out just perfectly so about four inches is what I left sticking out on this side so that's a loop so it actually would be like eight inches over here but anyway it worked out just perfect it's just enough um, and it still has a lot of give so lots of room there so I am going to go ahead and cut some of this excess off I don't know how much to cut off just I want to maybe leave a little bit more than normal because uh, just for now just in case I, I got that wrong <laughs> and I need more okay I have a few more things we need to get this cover finished so we've got all of the tags and things that we've already prepped so we've got those and then we're also going to need a few more other elements and we're going to need some flowers from this Prima collection and this is flirty fleur and this is item number six three four five five one um, and we're going to need some of the flowers out of here. So I'm just going to go ahead and remove that from the package. So we're going to need some of those. And then we're also going to need, if I'm not mistaken, we're just going to need one of these borders. Yep, yep. So this is Prima's a Flirty Fleur, Prima Flowers, item number 634. Four five four four. So we literally just need one of these pieces here. So let me see if I can get this off of here. I really thought this was a very clever. Um, it's like a laser cut, thick chipboard type um, thing, which I really like this idea. Um, I think it's really cute. I also really like the idea of where's that other pack of flowers doing the frames with the flowers I thought that was a really cute idea but then I also thought it was a really cute idea to add the stencil to them but I'm just, I'm just gonna say that I was a little bummed when I went to play with it because um, it's it's almost too thick to use it as a as a as a stencil with like 
blending tools. So maybe we'll play with that more later, but maybe if they made them a little bit thinner, the little stencils would be super cool. I mean, it'd be great if you're using like modeling paste or something like that. That would be fine, but when it comes to like using it with ink, because that's what I thought we would do initially when I first thought, oh, this would be the perfect a thing because I don't know if you can really see um, the actual stencil but it's like it's really pretty but it didn't work out so I don't know just thought okay so then that let's see which flowers are we gonna use might as well go ahead and pick those out um I'm, 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 I'm gonna be using I think I'm gonna be using this teeny tiny little green one right there and then I'm going to use one of these little bigger polka dots, black and white polka dot ones there. And then, uh oh, did I use one out of this other pack? No. Whoops. I think I've made a, oh, this one. I use this one. So there's only going to be three flowers on the covers. I will pull this up so you can see. You want to pick those out of that package there. Those are the three that we're going to be using on the cover. And that's it. Right? Good. Okay. All right. So the first thing I want to show you is, let me get this off of there and take that part back off. So this is going to be layered onto here, but it's going to be at a, at a cattywonk, but it's going to look like it's like tucked behind there. So what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to lay this on here like this. And then both of these smaller tags are going to be on here. I just need to remember which way I have them on here. I think they're going to kind of go like this. Right? So I know this sounds a little weird, but I'm going to take my art glitter glue. And I'm going to attach these together just really quick. I hope I got, I hope glue came out. I'm going to attach them together and hang on just a second because then I think what I'll do is I'll trim, well you'll see, just don't have a heart attack. Nobody, nobody faint. Okay, so I'm going to, I'm going to attach these together a little bit better. In class, everybody was like, Whoa, what are you doing? Oh my gosh. I know. It doesn't seem, it seems a little odd, but we're doing it. Okay. So what I want to do is, I'm going to cut this at a slant, an angle, that is. So I'm just going to mark where that purple piece ends or is uh, uh, while I'm laying it down here on a slant. If you guys can even see that, I'm gonna just mark it. And I'm either going to take my scissors or I'm going to take, where's that mark at? My paper trimmer. Let's do the paper trimmer. In class, we did each one individually. But I think this would be easier. So I'm going to line up that mark down here to the blade and then this one up here. Like that. And I'm going to trim it off. Ah! Okay. So what happened is I trimmed off this piece right here, right? Trim that off. And it is going to get stuck right here, right under that lip, just a little bit like that, so that it looks like it's tucked behind that purple piece. Can you see that? Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add glue to the back side of this. Good amount of glue since all three pieces are attached together. And I'm gonna tuck that. Up underneath that little lip that we left in the beginning. Remember I said about a quarter of an inch away. Just like that. I am going to come back up here. Add some glue. Right there. Oh, 
What do you think? Is that cool? I think so. And then we're going to do the same thing on the back side, except we're going to have one here. How did I do it? Yeah, one there and one, shoot, <laughs> one there and one here. I don't know how I did it, for crying out loud. Let's see. Oh, I'm not slanting that one enough. So one kind of like this. And then one like this. Alright, I'm going to go ahead and attach this down. And, whoop, and I'm going to mark there. And I'm going to mark there. Get my paper trimmer. And I'm going to move that seam binding out of the way. Line that mark up. Line that mark up. What do you guys think? Do you like this idea? Do you like this little technique? So then that'll go here. Well, you know what? I think before I attach this down, um, uh, down here at the bottom, I'm going to write today's date. And today is message today's the 12th so this is December 12th so I'm gonna write that down here on the bottom 2018 all right now I'm gonna glue it down so I'm gonna get close to that edge get that a little bit whoa <laughs> right in the hole it went <laughs> That wasn't cool, was it? Now I gotta be careful not to get my book in that. Okay, so then I'm gonna slide this up underneath that little lip right there. Best I can. I hope none of the, or hope it didn't, um, the glue didn't ooze too much when I put that spine piece on. I mean, it might have, which can cause issues with this type of thing, but. Perfect. I think I'm gonna add a little bit of glue under there, like that, and a bit more over here. Right? So then that's the back side. The back side's actually all finished. What do you think? Do you like it? I think it's pretty cool. I might even ink that edge just a little bit, just cause. And maybe that a little bit. Those might be too long. So you just make some adjustments, you know? It's your, it's your traveler's notebook covers. You make whatever adjustments that you see fit okay so there's that so then on this side we're going to take this piece right here and it actually fits perfectly along this cover right here so that's the first thing we're going to do is we are going to glue this down excuse me we're going to glue this down with the our glitter glue again I was trying to get the glue off the tip and anyway, all right, so I'm just going to take, since I got this little pointy end, I'm just going to go through and add little dots of glue um, to as many places as I can. I mean, clearly you're not going to be able to follow every line here and get a glue on everything, but try to do the best you can. You want to try to make sure that it gets stuck down because uh, my prototype um, it traveled pretty well but some of the layers came off a little bit kind of peeled back which again was okay because I caught it in time that I could glue it back down but then you know it rubbed again so but like I said you know I was traveling with these albums so 
they were not um, safe at home being used or even toss them in my purse um, seems like it'd be safer than traveling with <laughs> with them um, but anyway enough of that all right so now I'm just going to go ahead and place this on my cover and remember that this glue dries clear so it might look pretty funky right now but the glue will dry clear Whoops, I don't want that dried. I don't want that stuck together. There we go. And you may have to come back and add just a little bit more glue at some point, but right? So that's cute. So now at this point, I am gonna go ahead and put this back on because the flowers, I'm gonna strategically place them to where this can go there, right? So the biggest one is this one. And I think it's going to go here. I think it's going to go, now that I've got glue all over me, right about here. It's going to go right around there. And these leaves are, these leaves, these petals are a little not perfect. It's going to go right around there. And then this one here, this little guy here, is going to go tucked up under it just a little bit like that. Just a little. And then this little teeny guy down here, or this little little guy is going to go down here. About right there. And then that will be my cover. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to tack them down. I'm going to put the largest one first. And it's going to go right there. Then I'm going to put this little little guy, not the littlest guy, this is like a medium guy. And I'm going to stick him right there. Best I can. And I'm going to stick the tiny guy down here right there. Close enough. Maybe have this little bit, just a little bit. Yeah. Okay, guys, that is all we're going to do for the cover. Ooh, you know what? I might have to put better glue on that one. I'm going to use the fabric attack because this just is not wanting to stay. Um, no big deal. I'm going to leave that out. I might have to use it for the other two flowers. <laughs> It's not what they put. Okay. So this is the cover. So this is the prototype that I made for the class. And then this is the one we just made on camera. What do you think? Do you think we nailed it? I think we did. I think we did pretty good. So I think it turned out fantastic. I love this soft cover style. Um, I love this beautiful color combination and I love the elastic closure that really does make it nice so you guys please let me know what you think and give me a thumbs up if you like this video and if you haven't subscribed to my channel already go ahead and hit the circle and then hit the bell no uh, the bell the bell notification to let you know uh, to notify you when I upload a video and then here's a link to my Etsy shop if you're interested in the templates and there should be some other videos up here on the top of the screen that you may enjoy watching. So I will see you guys next time. Bye.